you're welcome to Kilkenny County Matters. We've got a jam-packed show for you tonight. Let's take a look at what's coming up. As part of Heritage Week, we head to Kilkenny Castle for a display from Hawkeye Birds of Prey. We catch up with all the action at the Dunhamagan Gym Canna. We attend a beautiful retrospective exhibition in Gores Bridge. Finally tonight, we meet a very talented local musician, Mick Walsh, who's just released his third album. John Duggan from Hawkeye Falconry is here today in the park in Kilkenny Castle doing a display for Heritage Week. How did you get involved in this? Uh, it started when I was very young. I was 13 when I had my first bird of prey, so uh, this is how I got involved. And I've just been captivated by birds of prey since I was a child. So are they pets or is it a hobby no, or is, this, is this like a full-time career with you? It's a full-time career at the moment, yeah. Mm. Um, we started the business Hawkeye Falconry this year. Um, but um, they never, they're never pets, you, you know, you just have to train them and do your best with yeah, them. And yeah. you see in there at the start, Roger wasn't behaving himself. Yeah, before. he came right out of me. Yeah, well, <laughs> see, there, was, there was some dogs, strange dogs yeah. in the area and stuff like that. But this is all part of the excitement as well. Exactly. You know, sometimes yeah. it'll go wrong, sometimes it'll go right. You never know what you're going to get. Um, now, what have we got here? This is Digger. He's a South American burrow now. And he's kind of our top display board for the kids. Okay. So he'll fly along and land on kids' heads and shoulders, and as you've seen earlier on, and he's a great little bird, this fella. Okay. He's only four ounces in weight, so you have very little um, room, a, room for weight control with him, you know? He's so a chirpy you, little guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. He's just hungry. Yeah. And how do you train them, John? Um, different birds, different ways, depending on what you want them to do as well. You know, some birds we train for hunting, mm -hmm. some birds we train for experiences like today. Mm -hmm. So different birds that are uh, trained for different things require different methods of training. John, you're like an encyclopedia about what's happening in Kilkenny. Slightly <laughs> <laughs> like, exaggeration, like <laughs> But we're here for Heritage Week in the castle, and there's events like this going on all over Kilkenny. What else could people have seen this week? Well, there's three events I attended with uh, Captain Larry Scally. He's stationed in James Stevens' office uh, barracks, and he's big into history. We had a walking tour of Kilkenny visiting the connection with the Second World War. So it was very interesting. But the open the best thing about it is most of it is free. Like you do free tours of the castles on Sunday now. And okay. the Dunmore Caves on Sunday as well. Okay. You know, so there's a lot to be done. Great, there's loads and here. If you're a pensioner like me and you have the time, it's great. For stuff. two talks a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with the Fafard family who are on holidays from Canada and spending a week in Kilkenny. And your name is Piper? Yep. Yeah, and Holden. Yep. What beautiful names. Did you enjoy the eagle and the falconry display? Yes, yeah. very fun. Yay. Yeah. And did one land in your head? Yep. yep. Nearly. Didn't poop. <laughs> You're lucky. Um, and they weren't too hungry. They didn't, you know, no. bite off the ears of any child and anything no. there. And I know no, it was very good. So what's the difference between the birds here and back home? Um, well, the one difference that I can see is that the birds back home, they're more brown and darker colors. This is okay. here, they're more lighter. And would you have displays like this back home, Mum? Um, no, not with the falconry exhibits. We would see the birds, but very few people actually fly them. So that was really nice to see. And Gleason family are here, and you've had a really exciting afternoon, didn't you, young man? Did you enjoy the birds, Connor? Yeah. 
And Dad, you were here for the whole two hours display. Yeah. Um, like, you must be a bird lover then. I'm a big nature lover, and where I live out in the country, we like to get up and spot the pheasants and all the nature. So it's wonderful to see some of the birds that we've seen here today. You just don't get to see them in the wild, yeah, in or around Kilkenny. You'd be very lucky if you got to see them. So it was wonderful, and it's nice to see the kids enjoying it as well. You know. And was a good exhibition. Fantastic. I yeah. was very impressed now, very impressed. Larry Costello, you're a chairperson of the Dunamaga Gym Canna. What does Gym Canna stand for? Uh, Gym Canna is probably for all the younger people that are coming up and maybe in the less professional sort of way. The shows will be maybe for more professional sort of way, professional riders. So Gym Canna is where all the kids start. And so starting with the tiny tots? Starting with tiny tots up to amateur riders and even professional riders do come here all right we have professional riders here today as well actually so okay. no, it's a great day out for everyone really like so going up through the age group it's starting with the lead rain and they're lead rain, tiny uh, kids that's right yeah we have lead rain classes for under fours under sixes and under eights okay and the parents and, uh, are dressed the same and they lead them around that's right yeah yeah it's a great day out for the parents as well they all have their cornets on and the whole lot on sort of way and then they can go down and jump we have competitions for under eights down below it's on there at the moment now uh, they'll be jumping little fences sort of way and, and probably their first balls. show jumping competition well, yeah 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 first big day for them all uh, yeah so this will be a day that they'll remember for the rest of their life I suppose a lot of them really Tom Maloney from Warrington Equestrian Centre. Tom, shows like this wouldn't be possible without sponsors like you. Shows, uh, shows like this is the most, is very important for them, for the people in localities, not alone that, for bringing on young kids and ponies and horses. This is where we all began. Like, well, I remember when I was c coming with our lads, uh, we had, we'd have nine or ten in a lorry coming. And this, this was the mo one of the most important shows we used to come to. And there's it still, great, it still is. And there's great support here for it oh, today. Oh, fantastic. It's fantastic to see it. And the day is good. And uh, the hospitality is good. You couldn't ask for better, really. And you have two granddaughters jumping today. Two granddaughters jumping. That makes it good for me also. <laughs> so I have to, I'm back, I'm, rewind, I'm back on the rewind. Roberta, now you're looking younger than ever and everyone's talking about today and you've been teaching 28 years horse riding and you were my teacher. Yes I was, I remember you, you used to come I think at 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, spot on, how do you remember everyone's name, everyone's name of their pony, like it's incredible, 28 years teaching. Well I remember them because I associate them with somebody else. That's how I remember people's names. And I ask them, where do they live? And then I kind of can remember as well. And you've got a very important role here today. You're the secretary and the treasurer of the Dunhamagan Jim Canna. I am, yes. And I'm doing that for about 30 years, I'd say. And we run it for the uh, Carlo Kilkenny home care team every year and St. Joseph's home in Kilmagani. Okay. And you're also in charge of the dog show. I am. And well, that, that, that's very important to bring outsiders that aren't really interested in horses, they still come here. They do, they're yeah. coming from Waterford today and all over Kilkenny and they're bringing their dogs specially, otherwise they wouldn't be here. Anya, you're here with your daughter Aoife and you're just about to start into the lead rein competition. Yeah, that's right Siobhan, we're here, um, Aoife's three and she's been going to the shows all summer along with her sister Chloe and we do the lead reins 
every Sunday basically yeah every Sunday and this is where you started like this as well with your dad yeah that's right when I was a child my father used to bring me to Lee Drains and now we're back around full circle again doing it with um, my own children so it's great that's wonderful and you have yeah. to dress the same yeah it's all about um, the look the pony and then the rider but um, a lot of it is based on having matching outfits as you can see and um, you have the pony all plaited and then also the riding then they just lead them around and they walk and trot. Carl, you're here with your dog Maul and you're entering the Dunhamagan Jim Canna dog show. Yeah, I am. The uh, terrier class. The ta okay. Sorry, you did this last year as well. Yeah, I did it last year with her. And how did she go? Uh, she won a few classes. Okay, so she stops and bends, does she? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. She's contrary, is she? A uh, little. Sometimes. Okay. It's time now for a quick break. But if you've got a story for Kilkenny County Matters, you can Facebook or tweet us at Irish TV. Don't go away. We'll see you soon. Tonight, we're at a very rare exhibition, delving into the diverse heritage of Goresbridge and its hinterlands. And the man who's going to take me on the tour is Ned Moran. Welcome, Siobhan. Welcome to Inadara. Let's go have a look. Great. Ned, the exhibition here in Goresbridge for Heritage Week, it's something you do every year. Yes, we've been doing this now for about 10 years essentially and basically we're looking at aspects of local history. That's just the, just the basic kind of premise of what we, what we do like. And each year we kind of pick the team like and around that team other aspects of the local history will also, we'll also display it. So what was the theme this year? The theme this year was a retrospect of, of that kind of period of, of, of uh, displays. So we looked at all our displays and gave a kind of a a kind of a bird's eye view of what we've been doing over the years. So people can come along and see old photographs, artefacts, um, things like this, like the, the old Blacksmith's Forge, um, but also there's lovely stories between the great houses here in Gorisbridge and the great families. Yeah, it, it, it's essentially looking at how people lived, what people worked at, people like blacksmiths, uh, and the different types of houses, such, such as the wealthier families who lived in the bigger Georgian type houses, but are the ordinary people who lived in the kind of vernacular houses, the, the locally built and locally sourced houses. Okay. And then looked at what people did in their spare times, the sport in other words, and pastimes. So we looked at all those at various different periods, like things like skittles, things like cricket, which was played here quite a bit like in the, in the late 1800s, early And 1900s. handball? And handball. Handball was a very important sport here. People like the Duns and the Manns were very prominent handballers in, in this area. And, and they had converted an old mill uh, down near the river, like into a handball alley. And that was probably done like maybe in the late 1800s, early yeah. 1900s. And, and right behind us here, there's a forge. There's a now, forge. this would have been very popular in every town where... Yeah, uh, every yeah. town and village would have had their forge, and every area of the countryside would have had a forge. The blacksmith was an important kind of person within any community. Uh, going back into medieval and earlier times, since the iron started to be used, like the blacksmith was, was a, a focal point within any community. Not only was he, did he work with iron and work with that, but there were also the, the, the forges where places where people came to find out information. And, and, to be, and in the medieval times, like uh, proclamations were very often posted up at forges, and the blacksmith, who was very often a, a fairly learned man in his own way, uh, would read out proclamations because a lot of people couldn't read, obviously. Mm. So the forge was always important, like, and, and, and continued up until the early 20th century 
until industry and, and uh, the use of the tractor and the use of the motor car done away with the horses and uh, factory made tools and implements took over from the forge made implements so the yeah. forge died out in the early 20th century. So now talking about industry another important industry that was here was on the canal and I can see a beautiful model over here made by yourself. <laughs> yes in my spare time. Yes this is a, a model of a lock on the canal in, in the 1700s, in the particularly late 1700s, in order to improve transport within the country, they built uh, the, some of the canals, such as the Royal Canal and the Grand Canal, but they also improved navigation on the River Barrow. And, and this is a section of the River Barrow uh, representing the Lower Ballyen Lock, or Lings Lock, as it's referred to. And uh, the whole transport system was, was a, a backup to any kind of industrialization that was happening, particularly the milling business. Now, another thing that's caught my eye, um, the vernacular housing in the Irish countryside. This is extraordinary. So you're going into um, all the different type of houses that would have been built back in the day, from cottages um, to farmhouses. But you, like vernacular, to me, what, what that means, like it's something local tradesmen or? Uh, essentially, vernacular means houses that were built from local materials uh, and by local tradesmen and from uh, plans, if you like to call it, that had filtered down through the ages. Like mm -hmm. They weren't uh, designed by architects. They weren't taken from a uh, glossy kind of uh, bungalow bliss kind of uh, magazines or anything. Mm -hmm. Simply local houses that were built. All the materials, such as the roofing, the walls, the timber, was all locally sourced. Uh, and it was you know, easy to get at and they're relatively cheap to build. So Ned, um, over here we've got the start of the chemical or the lime industry and that's a feature for this week's Heritage Week. Yeah, this year Heritage Council have decided to feature uh, industrial heritage as part of their uh, brief for different areas to, to focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, some years ago we did a feature and they did a survey essentially of lime kills in the Skjokvarstein power stone area uh, and, and uh, here we have a, an example of some of the remaining surviving lime kills in the area like What a beautiful song, and that's your album title song called Image. It is, yes, Siobhan. I wrote that song last year. I was reminiscing on my live life in Dublin way back in the 70s, and I kind of. It was about 1973, I moved from a little place in County Waterford to Dublin. I lived there for 16 years. I started off living in the Ivy Hostel in Dublin. It's the cheapest, it was $10 a night before I got a job, and then I got a job in the motor trade. and. Uh, Starting off the wages were poor, so then I moved on. Then I got my nighttime job to keep the day job and my nighttime job when I worked in Slappery's pub in Cable Street. Very but famous pub. Very famous pub, yeah, and I learned a lot of tunes and songs there. But the image song then came about as a result of the weekends I used to have drinking with the barman when the bar closed every night. The barman used to sit up in the high stools and used to drink and drink and drink. And at then the end I'm, of a long shift. Yes, at the end of a long shift. But the pub was opened at 7 o'clock in the morning in Cape Street in Dublin. So if you were dying, there was a chance you might hop in for one in the morning. A steak and kidney pie. cure. Yes. And uh, the image song came about and I came around and I said to myself, how did I get out of that after all the years? And I'm still going strong. And um, I was reminiscing on the aftermath of all those sessions on the Monday morning, you wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror 
and you set yourself what was that all about you have the Catholic guilt, a bit of the Catholic guilt you know no. did it, drank a bit too much over the weekend was that what it was about yes yes it was all to do with over drinking but that sound then I always realised then there might be other people in the same plight and I recovered no problem from that because I had to put my day job together five days a week and I just said to myself maybe there's a message in it for other people because I came out of that I still have a few points no problem at all that's the type track the song image is about that so it's that image that you held in your head and pulled yourself together pulled myself together after a few points and that's well, it Mickey, you've really pulled yourself together now because you've got three albums yeah this is my third one now uh, big influence my music would have been the Beatles the very, Beatles but your yeah. music is very Irish surely there's very some Irish, Irish influence as well for this album we more or less like all the chords are kind of adapted to I followed their music since I was a kid in the 1960s like if I was bringing my mum a cup of tea up to her bedroom the tray that you put a cup of tea on had the four Beatles members on it. We would have bought it for 150 or something like that. It was all the Beatles. But I also had a great interest in Irish trad music and um, folk music. And I learned a lot in the 1970s from the people that played in Slattery's of Cape Street every night. You had and who would have played? Well, for instance, there was um, Seamus Ennis was a famous piper, Elan Piper. And in the 1960s, he used to have a little TV programme at 5.30 on uh, Saturday night, Saturday evening, on the uh, RT old channels in black and white. Okay. And my cousins used to be always on it. And uh, as a result of that, then, he would be one fellow who played in Slattery's. Michael Russell played there. He was a famous man from County Clare. And then the more famous people who are still performing as folk singers would be Andy Irvine, yeah. Paul Brady, Mick Hanley. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week. I think Mick is going to sing us out with 21 Steps. Do join us at the same time next week, because remember, who Candy County matters. There's a couple of places, it's not very old, and you want to walk back in time. There's 21 steps in this little walkway till you get to the other side. Well, it's our century, it's only steps, and our and our walk break. Just we'll play back in the 1600s and half survive the daybreaks. But we stick stars in those days, lying the lanes to sell their wares. Be the shopping street for hundred years, dreams of times gone by. I've seen the busker standing there, playing the songs for all to hear. We'll always remember Mick Watson, playing songs and other great bears. If you come from a place where it looks very old and you want to walk back in time, there's 21 steps in this little walkway till you get to the other side. But well, it's our century and stone steps still our and our walkway was built way back in the 1600s and has survived the day breaks. <laughs>